it's a new month and I want to wish you all a happy new month. It's your favorite gynecologist, Dr. Wanda Maya. And I'm back again with another video. Like I said, the revolution is happening. It's time to make Africa home again. I've been telling you what the retainees are doing here in Ghana. I've shown you a restaurant owned by a retainee. So which means whenever you come to Ghana, you'll find a place to eat. I've shown you where you can have fun, which is also owned by a retainee. I've also showed you properties that are owned by a retainee. So if you really want to return back to Ghana, definitely you'll have a place to sleep. But today, whenever you come to Ghana, I know that at some point in time, you will feel sick. So I need to bring you to where? A hospital. And this is when I present to you Luca Health Medical Center, which is also owned by a retainee, and she is an African American. Amazing, right? Don't forget to like the video. Hey, and you are new to the channel, so boy, Mr. Ghana baby. No, sorry, your favorite gynecologist doctor, yeah. But do me a favor 500,000 subscribers already, which means we can hit a million. I know each and everyone out there has a family member. Do so by introducing this channel to a family member. Come with me because I don't know, maybe this video might be long. I get super excited whenever I want to talk about something that is done by returning because I'm saying that it's time for both Africans on the continent and Africans in the diaspora to make Africa home again. Come with me and let's go talk to them. Aya Maya! You are the president of Luca Health Medical Center. I am, yeah. It's an honor to see you. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure to have a conversation with you and tell you about the things that we're doing. So I'm, I'm excited to have this conversation. But first of all, you need to tell me your name and where you're from and why Sure. That? My name is Rodney Armstead. I, am, uh, I was born in the U.S., born in uh, Los Angeles. I, I currently, um, uh, when I'm home, house out of the Northeast. But uh, Ghana became interesting because of the larger black ivy uh, vision. The larger black ivy vision is about building enterprises on, on services and goods across sub-Saharan Africa, Tanzania, Kenya, Ghana. These things that we do are intended to improve the quality of life, uh, improve the services that are offered. Uh, for people that live in the regions that you know we're serving, um, it also allows us to um, bring um, uh, new resources in that otherwise might have been difficult or challenging. But overall, the intent is always to improve uh, the quality of life. Um, if we can improve uh, the circumstances because we can employ people because they can work. Um, but I got involved because um, knowing the CEO, uh, Cheryl Mills, and executive chairman, Tony Welters, we had worked, Tony Welters and I had worked together for decades, and asked me to consider this five years ago, and when I looked at it, I said, wow, we use the word transformational too liberally in the United States, but the opportunity to come and do what we're doing at Luca Health to create uh, a medical surgical specialty, you know, center with the type of investment and commitment that we were talking about was truly going to be an opportunity to do something transformational. So that's what motivated me to kind of leave the states and come here. And I've been living here like the last four years. Mr. Maya. Okay, so I guess your name is Linda. I am Linda. Welcome. Hey, thank you, Linda. Welcome, welcome. What? What? Linda Abuaji. You are Ghanaian? Yes, I am. Very much Ghanaian. Very much Ghanaian. 100% Ghanaian. But your accent doesn't sound like a Ghanaian. <laughs> I'm Ghanaian born, American raised. Oh, okay. Yes. Wow. Welcome. Thank you. To Luca Health. I'm sure you've seen a lot of great things so far. No, I, I've seen a lot. I'm here to explore, but they said you're the only person who can take me around. So I just wanted to know what is Luca Health all about? Welcome. So, um, Luca Health is a state-of-the-art 
multi-specialty center. So what that simply means is we have multiple specialists oh, okay. that see you um, and consult with you. And then if you need surgery, the same specialist will also do the surgery for you. And how long does the surgery take? Uh, usually our surgery, because it's an ambulatory surgery center, that usually means outpatient. That means okay. we do surgery on the same day and then you're discharged the same afternoon. So if you, for example, if you come in for your procedure, mm -hmm. you'll check in at 7 a.m., you do your procedure, and then a few hours later, 12, 1 o'clock, if everything is fine, the nursing team, anesthesia team check you out, you'll be discharged for the day. So you same don't, you day. don't, same day. So you don't admit patients we, in here? Uh, we typically do not admit patients. So we assess patients before the surgery to make sure that they're a good candidate. Is it first of its kind in Ghana? Because it the is the first of its kind I did my surgery, I think I stayed in the hospital for more than a month. <laughs> Well, the good thing about Luca Health is we're bringing a lot of that technology into Ghana. So the rest of the world has, so the developed world is moving in that direction where it's a lot of outpatient surgeries to keep the risk of infections in hospitals lower. And the pr techniques that we use also help the patient recover faster. So okay. bringing it to Ghana, it is the first of its kind in Ghana. Multi-specialty center, yes. Are you one of the doctors who does the surgery? I am not a doctor. Okay. <laughs> I'd love to be a doctor, but no, I'm not a doctor. So I'm the director of ambulatory services. Okay. So a lot of what Luca Health focuses on is the customer service aspect mm. of it, mm. as well as the patient experience. Mm. So we're patient centric. So we make sure that the patient has a good experience from beginning to end. And I'm in charge of all that. And I want to know what kind of surgeries goes on here. Um, so we have a general surgeon. We have a gynecologist. Oh. I, I am a gynecologist. Your gynecologist is <laughs> I know. I heard you're a very experienced one. <laughs> so we have an internal medicine, mm. we have a nephrologist, mm. and we also have ENT. And, um, and, a, and a urologist, sorry, I almost forgot. My name is Maya, eh? Hi, Maya. Gynecologist in here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Oh, okay. You don't believe that I'm a gynecologist? Yeah, right? whatever you say, Maya. Hey, you okay. Thank you. I like Thank your you. name. It's very nice. Thank you. Maya. Very nice. You work in here? Mm-hmm. Yes. We do. As? Anesthetist. Okay, what as are you? A, as a surgical physician assistant. Born and raised in Ghana? No, no. I was born in Cameroon and partially raised in Cameroon, then lived most of my life in the U.S. What about Same you? here. Same here. Yes. Are you guys together as a couple? Or? Yes, that's yes. my husband. This oh, is my husband. Uh -huh, that's beautiful. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. But why are you hiding that from me? <laughs> <laughs> you you ask. You ask. <laughs> it's a family affair. Yes. A, oh, okay. But I, I wanted to know. Um, you left the USA. Came yes. To work in Ghana. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Nobody told you that you guys are getting crazy. Oh, a no. lot of people. People told us that. Yeah. But you know, we are originally from Africa, Africa so, so this is home. It's not crazy. <laughs> it's home. Yes, we yeah. sold our home, packed up, and took came, two kids, two kids, and brought them over. Brought them to Ghana. Wow! Mm -hmm. yes. And how has the experience been like so far? Amazing. It's been amazing. We keep telling our friends back in the states that they need to come. They need to come. Come back home. We have a lot of people back there with knowledge and clinical skills that they can come back home mm -hmm. and help our, our people. So yeah. that's what we hear. You know, like I, I know your doctors working in here. Definitely, there's some kind of changes that you guys are bringing on board can yes. you just give me like a little so example? for us um mm. i'll give you an example mm. we don't in africa there is there isn't a lot of um, outpatient surgery center i mean outpatient means you come in for surgery the same day and you leave same day wow. you don't stay for a week you don't stay for two weeks you stay for a day you go home same day we don't have that in africa and um, that's what we've brought here. And that's my specialty. I love our patient surgery because when I give anesthesia, I make sure that our patients leave the same day. So that's something that, you know, I feel like if we bring that into our um, community, mm. our practice here, it will change everything. You know, we've got a lot of, especially Nigerian doctors, mm -hmm. African doctors out there. Yes. 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 I mean, then, uh, you know, we try to change that narrative, right? Okay. Because a lot of Africans leave here, go to the UK, go to the US, the US go to India to seek medical care. Mm -hmm. You know, those are things that they don't have to do. We, yeah. Because what we're happens, here. we are here, we have brought those skills, we're doing minimal invasive procedures. Ooh. So the good thing about that is, if they go out there, they have to pay for a flight, they have to pay for a hotel, then the aftercare is not that adequate because they go in and do a procedure, then they come back to, 
to Africa. Mm. So who follow up? There's that yeah. disconnect. Mm -hmm. The surgeon in the West, there's no communication with the surgeon here or the physician here that is following up on the on the patient. But once you have a procedure done with with us, it's a one stop shop. If there's any other thing that needs to be done, we can just refer you to the other physician around the corner. So you get you ha actually have better quality quality of care. Yeah, that's beautiful. Doc, can you tell me your role in here? So I work in internal medicine and nephrology. Internal medicine looks after adult diseases, anything above the age of 18 that deals with medicine. But you are a Ghanaian? I'm a Ghanaian, absolutely. Born in, Ghana? Born in Kumasi, grew up in Kumasi in primary school, rich school, then came to Accra, Achimota School in Kolibu before leaving the country for a while. Where did you go to? I spent 20 years in England, 10 years in Canada, and one year in the Middle East in Qatar before returning home about nine months ago. Dog, after spending all these years out of Ghana, yeah. why do you want to come back home and work in Ghana? Returning home was the best thing I ever did. My father grew up in Ghana. He was a doctor, went abroad, came back. His stories were that Ghana was the best place to live and it's been the same for me. Ghana is where I come from. It's where my heart is. This is my people. Here I am one of a group of people. I'm not different from everyone else. I belong and it's really a blessing to be able to participate in giving health care back, anything back to, to your environment and your people. I'm no, very, very happy no, to be are back. Are you trying to say back in the days when you were working out of Ghana, yes. you did not feel like you belonged there or something? Essentially, I was treated very well, but my heart has always been here. The people here have the same genetic bond with me. Um, that bond never goes away. It's, for me, it's very deep. To break that and accept another people as your own, some people can do, but for me, I have always been at home. I have never spent 365 continuous days out of Ghana. Every year I come back twice. In fact, there was one year I came back six times. That's how precious Ghana is for me. Look, you're working in local health center right yes. now, of which I believe that most of the people that are working here yes. are both Africans in the diaspora yes. and Africans on the yes. continent, specifically Ghanaians. Sure. Um, how does it feel like working with people like that? I love working in multicultural environments mm. because everyone brings something different to the table. Everyone has learned the art of medicine in a different country. We have a different perspective. When you come and meet people, you always learn something new, and I love learning. Plus, you also get different perspectives, different approaches. When you add that to what you already know, it always improves you. And plus, that team gives you understanding of how people from a particular culture behave. So you, when you meet patients from that culture, you know how to relate to them. Interacting with people makes it much easier to interact with a broader group of people. It makes you a better doctor. If you cannot interact with people, you cannot practice medicine. I, I just want to know, yeah, um, the CEO is a black American. Yes. And you're also black American. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah. So I just want to ask you this question. Mm -hmm. Black American mm -hmm. establishing something like this here in Africa. Mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you said it's sub-Saharan Africa. Right. I've seen the other project that you've done, Are You Mesa Park. Well, yes, so the, the housing. Ivy. Yeah. And then this one. Yeah. So do you think that it's time for like African Americans and Africans work together to, I mean, liberate Africa to come together to build the continent? Do you think it's necessary at the very moment? Yeah, you know, I think that this is a, I think that there's uh, an extraordinary opportunity here. What I mean by that is this, that um, if you look at the political environment that's going on in the United States today, and it's, it's really nothing new. But it's unfortunate that the dynamic that's playing out is creating an opportunity to, for people to really kind of like reevaluate um, what the U.S. is about. And particularly for uh, African-Americans who fundamentally have been really kind of like the center of the negative attack that's occurred as a result of the dynamics of the political circumstances there. I think the conversations you hear are, and a lot of my colleagues call me up talking about, hey man, how are things in Ghana? You know, I think I want to come over there, you know, and some of it is that's like, yeah, they've kind of talked about it before, but the opportunity is even more relevant to them now because they feel, hey, look, things have got to be, you know, there, there's got to be good opportunity there now. So what I share this at to say is that there's, there's an, a momentum afoot 
for people to want to kind of really be open about considering, you know, coming to the continent. But I do believe that there's an opportunity to share, you know, what what's rich about the Ghanaian culture, what's rich about the African-American culture, bring those together because I think that there's some learnings that can be had on both sides. And it's just gonna require everybody to be willing to be open, right? And so sometimes we kind of get stuck in our ways, but it's really about saying, hey, look, let's embrace each other and we're better together than as, you know, as individuals. So if we can bring a lot of that energy together, I think that it would be very, very positive for the continent. How does it feel like working with Africans on the continent as an African-American? It's, it feels very good. It feels very natural. Uh, I was uh, very uh, excited when this opportunity became available uh, with Luca Health. I've always dreamed about coming back to, or coming to visit Mother Africa. And so this has allowed me to do two things I'm passionate about, uh, healthcare and, um, uh, you know, sort of get a sense of uh, my roots, you know, as an African-American. Um, so, yeah. Do you feel safe in here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, especially at this point in time, uh, oh. with everything that's going on back in the United States, with the, uh, you know, the, the killing of African Americans almost on a weekly basis, the continued fueling of the fire by the, by the current president who just wants to continue to, the, to divide us. And, uh, you know, it, it just seems so surreal right now. I feel like I'm watching a documentary about the civil rights movement in the 1960s. It's, it's just crazy over there right now. And, uh, but, what really uh, excites me about being here is how passionate the Ghanaian people are about what's going on in the United States. And um, you know what I want you to do because this is owned by an African American and mm -hmm. definitely we have a lot of Africans in the diaspora yeah. who I believe that they can do more on mm -hmm. the continent. Yeah. So if both of you should send a message to our fellow brothers and sisters living in the diaspora mm -hmm. to return home, yeah. what would that message be? The message will be, please come back home. Come back home. Africa is the future. We as young people, we have to take um, charge of our future. We cannot let people um, actually talk about our narrative. We have to be the narrative. So come back home. Come develop Africa. Come help Africans, your fellow brothers and sisters. Bring the knowledge that you've learned from the diaspora. Come back home. Do you think Africa is the future? I think Africa is the future. I think when you look at the resources uh, that's, on, that's available in the continent, I think that what you've seen is development that's fundamentally occurred in other emerging uh, countries that fundamentally are now uh, becoming increasingly more developed. China is a classic example uh, of a country that figured out how to embrace and transform its large rural areas and large populations into creating an opportunity for them to be able to work, you know, and drive, you know, um, income to support their families. But fundamentally, China is a powerhouse in driving a lot of, of, of economy and commerce that pushes out of the country, out of the, out of the country, right? So if you look at that, you basically say, in Africa, uh, we just have begun to scratch the surface of what the opportunity is. And I think things are fundamentally delayed, but I think investing dollars will continue to move toward the continent. I think as, as investors particularly and others begin to see uh, how things fundamentally begin to develop here, um, I think you'll see more and more investment come in that kind of supports this, but I think that the, the continent is extraordinary in its resources, and it just hasn't been uh, leveraged and sought after from an international investing perspective, but I think you see indicators where a lot of money is increasingly coming into the continent, and I think a lot more people are gonna be more and more interested in coming here because there's just untapped resources. Who are the people that are expected to come in here? 
Um, anybody that needs um, medical and surgical care. So if you have, if you've seen your general practitioner and you need to be um, monitored or uh, managed in a particular way, so a specialist needs to see you, or even referred to a specialist or being referred for surgery, we're the place to come to get your... And uh, where is the location? Plan. So we have two locations. Oh, okay. You're currently standing at our new flagship location, which is uh, Luca Health West. So this is in the same campus as MDS Lancet in East Legon. Mm. The second one is also in East Legon, but it's over by the Underbridge, if you're familiar with East Legon. Mm. It's in the Occasion Medical Center campus as well. Do you think that someone <laughs> like Wodemeyer can afford? Absolutely. How? Really, my, a, ho uh, a whole Wodemeyer. Yeah. It's not too expensive for me. A whole Wodemeyer, you can afford. You can afford. And again, think about it this way. Mm. How much is your life really worth? How much is your health worth to you? Health as well, you know, so you Absolutely. Have to invest in it. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to do the investment. And it's very, very affordable. Mm. So it, it's, it's important that people look at it as value for your money. So if you're investing in your health, then you know that long term, you know what is already wrong with you and mm. you know what you're dealing with versus coming up on, like right now we're having issues of cancer and things that we're, we're finding out later mm. and then are unable to be treated. But the, the best prevention is to know earlier so that you know how to treat it. So it's very affordable. Very, very affordable. Very affordable. High quality, very affordable. If I should understand whatever goes on here, you're trying to tell Africans that enough of spending your money abroad for your health care instead of doing it here at Luca Health Center. Absolutely. There is no need for you. So if you have family members that are in Ghana, there's no need to send them from here to go to checkup abroad. They can do the checkups right here. We have internal medicine who can do the checkup for you. We have the resources, we have the physicians, we have the knowledge base, all right here in Ghana. If you need surgery done, we can do it right here in Ghana also. You don't have to fly abroad to do the surgery. Do you regret coming back to Ghana? Absolutely not. <laughs> Wait, absolutely not. I thought you were going to say absolutely, absolutely yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not. So it's always been my dream to come back to Ghana. I've always, always, always had Ghana at heart. So as I mentioned earlier, I am Ghanaian born and American raised. So I left Ghana very, very early. And I've always, in my dealing, you can ask my friends, you can ask people that I deal with all the time, is they always said, Linda said she would move back to Ghana. However, I didn't think it would be this early. I wanted to come back in Ghana and make an impact in healthcare. I didn't think it would be this early. I'm glad that it is, um, but I'm, I don't regret it at all. I made the move and I haven't regretted it since. Thank you so much for talking to me. Thank you, thank you, Woody. It's an Certainly. absolutely pleasure to meet you.